in a modern day major label placement, the producer of the beat does end up getting 50% of the record on the composition side. Has that been your experience? That's been my experience uh, in, in hip hop. Situations are different, but what what can a producer likely expect from a major label placement on the legal side of things? I, I, I'd say a couple thousand dollars. You know, I, I, there's a lot of myths on on what you usually get. You know, I usually see four thousand, uh, but it could be anywhere from you know to the to the you know maybe higher if if you you earned that sort of privilege. Uh, but you know, I, I would say around four, uh, and then you know on on the point side. You know, one to four, one to four points, uh, and and sometimes maybe none, especially early on in your career. I, I see that often if it's your first placement or you know your second placement, you might not get points. But uh, you know the expectation or what I'd fight for it. And usually, if you have an attorney and and they're fighting, they'll get you a couple points or a, you know at the very least a point. So you should you should expect to get a couple thousand dollars uh, and and some points. Uh, it may be a point, but you know, if you're not using an entertainment lawyer, lawyer, I think you might, you or you don't know know how to negotiate at that point. You know, you might not even need an entertainment lawyer, obviously. But uh, if you don't know anything about what you what you should be getting, you know, there's a chance that you might think it's acceptable to get bought out, you know, whole wholesale, and and that and that agreement should never talk about publishing. Uh, it, what, and what I mean by that is it should never eliminate your publishing. You should always get 50%, uh, and, and that should be known. And anybody you're dealing with at the major label should know that, and that should be pretty standard. So you should get that you should get that 50% publishing. You should get maybe a, you know anywhere from one to four points, uh, and you should get you know a couple thousand dollars, uh, especially early on in your career. Um, and, and, and that's pretty, and that's, and that's pretty, the, the, that's like the skeleton. Just to contextualize the conversation though. So you, so we have, and we talk about this all the time, the two types of ownership of a song. So you have the composition side, which is associated with publishing. And then you have the master side, which is associated with, um, the points. Correct. So what do the points mean? I guess in practical terms. It's just a percentage. It's a percentage point. It's a percentage point of the master recording royalty, you know, everybody's got to sort of recoup before you get those points. But, uh, and recouping means, you know, obviously, you know, the advance gets paid back and the marketing budget and everyone, you know, uh, you know, all that stuff gets paid back. But that's on that side. It has nothing to do with, you know, the ASCAP or BMI situation. I guess traditionally it was, it was you could calculate it based on the suggested retail cost of the album. Yeah, and that, that, aren't those terms so weird now? That's my point. It's like yeah, you know, it's changing so much. Well, it's like the term mechanical royalty, right? It right, was right. On player pianos, which haven't really. Well, I guess they still exist, but you know, come on. I, I got choked up on that question. You know, when they asked me that on the you know producer Brian, because I was like, well, you know, I, I know what it is, but like, how does it relate to now? It's it's a, it's, a, it's a royalty bucket. Like you'll you'll get you, you, it's a it's a it's, you'll get royalties from it when when something streamed, but why it exists you know and 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 now you know i don't it, it's it, we've bent it we've we've we certainly bent it yeah i mean I, I guess i can see why they don't want to change it suddenly just because it's gonna or just change the name because it's a semantic thing you know what i mean because because we know what it means right but the name doesn't match up because there's nothing really mechanical about it <laughs> yeah, no for sure yeah that, that, that's it that's it so why are so many producers, this is a, a, maybe a, a personal opinion question, but why are so many producers signing agreements without contacting lawyers first? I see that all the time. Uh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't get it. I, you know, I think a lot of lawyers do overprice for like producer agreements. Like, you know, I usually work at a rate where, you know, I, I'll go by the advance for smaller stuff, but, you know, I'm not taking more than, you know, uh, you know, you're not, you, you know, a couple hundred dollars. To, to negotiate a producer agreement just because it's, you know, it's it's so standard our end. You know, we, we negotiate a lot of the same points. And, you know, honestly, if you've been in it a little bit, you know, uh, the agreements you get back, you've seen already. 
So it's, it's, you know, it's a lot of, uh, it's repetition and, and things like that. So, you know, you obviously need to get paid for your services, but I think the first thing is, you know, people are intimidated by contacting an attorney, getting in touch with an entertainment attorney and, you know, the prices and the price point for, you know, what they are offering for them, sir, their services. And, uh, you know, in a, in a lot of ways I, I've been excited to be, to feel like I, I've been a, a gap filler just because, you know, once again, you know, we're negotiating a producer agreement, especially after you've done them, you know, a couple hundred times, you know, they're, they're pretty standard, you know, where you're looking and, you know, you could be an asset and you could help somebody get a point. So, you know, I had a producer who contacted me and, you know, now we have a very good relationship, but, you know, it was just, it was just like, he wasn't even getting points, you know, working with, a, you know, all I did was ask and, it, it, and it, you know, he got points. Uh, and then, you know, obviously some of the smaller detail language, that you want to negotiate and, and mark up and, and make sure that you're getting paid. There's all, you know, even how and when, you know, producers get paid. Sometimes you'll agree to a price. You won't even get paid for a while until, you know, an attorney comes into the picture. So I just, I, I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's the, it's the fear of the price, obviously. And, you know, the, mystique almost it's just you know it's, it, it, it intimidates a lot but i think in the music space we're starting to get more and more attorneys who are are uh, are, are hip to the game and hip to culture and you know just have a better and more realistic understanding of you know what what people can afford and you know what things are worth i think what's cool that i'm seeing now more than i guess ever is that entertainment lawyers are starting to put themselves where the, where the people are, where their potential clients are, you know, and and by that, I mean you, for example, you did a producer grind interview. Um, the, the lawyer that I've been working with forever is active on social media. I'm seeing all these other lawyers that I haven't worked with, but I'm just, you know, like Adam Friedman and people like that, just being online, communicating with producers, making themselves accessible. So any producer that wants to network with a lawyer, now that barrier is, is eliminated a little more and you can actually yes. have or yeah and, and and that's and that's a great point and that and and i love that i love that aspect and there's more dialogue and and more uh just more game being exchanged because you know ideally you know I, I i still think you know you know i'm never i'm never worried about my place in a game or the industry i think that's a weak uh that's a sort of a weak thing to do to sort of just worry about your place but i'm never worried about my place no matter how much game i give up just because you know, end of the day, it's a, it's a time thing, you know, who's going to look over 20 pages or whatever it is, you know, to get to make sure the be, in the best deal or negotiate that the, those things don't go away. So, you know, a lot of the, a lot, I, I just like, I like the conversation because you, I, I want to work with producers who are, who are also trying to challenge the way shit, the shit is, you know, it's essentially, you know, I, I don't, I just don't, I don't like, I just don't like, I don't like the whole music ecosystem as a whole. You know, I'm not really, I came from finance and not like finance is perfect or, you know, business on that side is perfect. But, you know, a lot of the numbers in, in this arena just don't make sense. So let's talk about this producer grind interview that you that you did recently. Shout out to um, producer grind. And, and I appreciate you for shouting me out. Yeah, for sure. I was like, no, nah, because I, I knew about you and, and uh, Kato on the track just from, you know, Twitter. <laughs> One of the, the comments left on the video on YouTube read, and I should never read comments, but some, somebody wrote, for every producer starting now, please negotiate your own agreements. What's your reaction to that statement? Yeah, that's, that's so, uh, that's just weird. It's a weird, it's a weird take. I get the money aspect, man. I don't, I don't come from a lot of money. So it's like, I get, I get the, and you know, I, I, I understand that part of it, but it's a weird it's a yeah that's a it's a weird combo too because then it's like the people you're you're that that have been feeding and helping you're also not trying to feed that's a, the only way this the, the life ecosystem works the capitalism and you know any of this stuff works is that people get fed so you know i, I just think there's just like a uh you should want to you should want to work with people and, and help them and, and help them eat you know whether it be an attorney or a manager or it's just a bad it's a bad way of doing business that's what i was talking about earlier about a lot of just bad weird shit going on in music as a whole it just you know i i don't i, I don't i just don't think that's true and 
but but I get it though. You know, I I don't I don't also want to see a lot of people spending more money than they can, and your legal budget should be fairly small. Uh, but you know, producer agreements with a major label, like don't just what, what, don't ever just sign that or look that over yourself and think that you should be. That's that's, that's crazy. You know, I, I think the smaller deals maybe you have a better chance, and you know, it's not that much writing on it and whatever you want to fathom in your head. But you know, when you get a major label deal or 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 an agreement from a law firm and and your 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 goal is to just look that over and and that's what you think it's going to be okay i'd say come on you you should you should you got we got to know better than that. we and, and i'm not chastising anyway you we as people come on that's that, that's that's not it that's not it yeah you would think with the level of 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 paranoia and fear associated with the major labels and and just contracts in general you would think people would be more proactive about um protecting themselves but so, so just to be absolutely clear, because people ask me this question already, and I know you already answered it, but just to put it out 100%, in most cases in a modern day major label placement, the producer of the beat does end up getting 50% of the record on the composition side. Has that been your experience? That's been my experience uh, in, in hip hop. Uh, hip hop and R&B. Uh, in, in that space, that's that's definitely been my experience. I think if anyone starts doing work in the other arenas, it, it is different. It, it can be different, uh, and they break it down in a more, I think, literal way, in a very like what you contributed to the record way. Uh, but uh, like with a band or something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like they they really break it down. Uh, but in in hip hop, no, it's it, it that's to be established, and that's why I think like. There needs to be some sort of simple legislation. You know, it doesn't have to be from, like, actual government or, or some sort of board sort of issuing basic, you know, rules on these things. Because it's like, yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's what it is. And, you know, if anyone starting business or starting a management company, I, I'd be – you can find information online, though, that says otherwise. And that's where, like, that's where the issues come up. Yeah, so then on the other side of the um, the copyright coin, major labels, I, I would say in all cases, it's probably 99.999 with the, with the bar over the, the, the third nine. Um, it, 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 the, in most cases, labels are taking masters from producers and from the artists that they sign, correct? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I know you have an issue with that. Um, uh, and we can talk about, but have, have you ever witnessed a situation in which a producer sells a beat to a label and retains ownership of 50% or more of the master? No. Uh, unless the producer is like being the artist, like if you're a Metro or a Murder Beats and you're sort of like, it's like on your album uh, sort of thing, right? Uh, I, I've seen that and more and more producers are starting to do that, which is dope. I champion that. I think that's like, that's a, that's a cool aspect of hip hop because, you know, a tag in the beginning of a record can sell a, help sell a record. You know, I think that's when you start, that's when you should start feeling more entitled to bigger percentages too. It's like, you know, when that tag, when someone hears that, that you know, that sound or, you know, I'm, I, uh, the per, I'm, uh, you know, a consumer is more likely to just want to listen to it or stream it or contribute to that record success. So, uh, I, I think there's a there's a I, I've never seen that I, I've never seen it but you know the only time where I think you know the producer is getting more of the share or getting fifty percent is you know obviously when you know they're like when Metro drops a mixtape or an album or when those guys are doing out those types of albums. 